Nora, tell us where you are in your life at the moment. I suppose the last time we were talking, Barry, I was talking about Richard and about his death. And I guess I've been writing my book for the last few months and there's been a bit cathartic in one way, but a bit of a journey too. So I suppose I think I gave myself permission to live life again a few months ago, definitely. I, I definitely felt that there was something different about me, that I had this, I don't know, capacity for happiness again is probably the best word. Um, mainly because I found myself speaking to people a lot, a lot about death and about grief and bereavement. And at some point I began to think that actually for all those Richards out there who die too young and don't have a chance to fulfil their life to the full, for all the people who sit in hospices and won't get to fulfil their potential, all the mothers who, unlike me, you know, beating my child up about a science exam, all those mothers in the world who worry about clean water, you know, there's kind of a moral obligation to get out there and just get life and just live it. You can't just sit passively by and crawl under a bed and hope it's all going to happen. I mean, I've been given good health. I can stand on my own two feet. I should be living life to the full. And that's what I think. A lot of people go through their life on autopilot and they think, do you know what? We live in a disposable society. So if this one's no good, sure, I'll have another one. It's kind of fast love, fast yeah. food, <laughs> fast culture. You've given yourself permission to live a life again. I, can I have permission to ask you some cheeky questions? It depends on what they are. OK, well, let's give it a go. Who you are you cheeky anyway. Yes, give me that. Who do you think is hotter, Enda Kenny or Michael Flatley? No, that's a difficult one, actually, because I've always said I'd be more inclined towards, you know, a clever person than maybe a handsome person, because I like intellect. Like, I think well, intellect is beautiful. Yeah, that's why I was trying to decide which one thing was more clever than the other. <laughs> I don't know if I'd say he was hotter, but I'd probably prefer to sit next to Enda Kenny to have a bit of a banter. Yeah, talk about politics, Mayo. Yeah, I don't understand mindfulness at all. Can't understand how anyone can stay in a moment. No moment seems that compelling. Even while I'm talking to you, I'm trying to figure out, I'm doing some research on an interview that I'm going to be doing tomorrow, Cool and the Gang, Robert Cool. So while we're talking, my head is also going through, ladies night, <laughs> get so down do on have, it. So you do have girl crushes then, that's the question. Tammy, do, do you think when men describe your voice as matron-like that they secretly fancy you? Men never describe my voice as matron-like. They say it's husky and sexy. You've obviously been talking to completely the wrong kind of men. It's only when I'm in a crowded room and people talk over me while I'm trying to keep cuteness that they say that I'm like matron Casey. Is your favourite song of all time, Relight My Fire by, the, by this Take That, or Come On Baby, Light My Fire by The Doors? How does that one go again? Come on, baby, light my fire. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way I'm going to say it. He's Relight my fire. <laughs> my he own. thinks he's at his bloody stag party night tonight. Get out. <laughs> See, she whacked me on the arse. It's fucking <laughs> nation.